There's a um, sort of a philosophic concept that a sufficiently advanced civilization will be able to create uh, a, simulation. a simulation. Yeah, maybe you've answered this before. A simulation. I've had so many simulation discussions. It's crazy. Okay. In my mind, like the, the the strongest argument for the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following: um, that that forty called forty forty years ago, we had pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, forty years later, we have photorealistic three D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have you know, virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Just in, indistinguishable. Um, even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, um, then you just say, okay, well, we'll let's imagine it's a 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. Um, so, um, so, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be, you know, billions of such, uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. And when we come out of what uh, we're here now into this virtual reality, we'll think it's real. I mean, it's like we're. Well, I, I mean, there's some interesting things here on the virtual reality front. Um, and, I mean, just and on the whole notion of a simulation, which is that if if you just ex if you extrapolate into the future, and say, well, how good, let's say, will video games be in a uh, hundred or two hundred or a thousand years from now? If, if there's continued improvement um, and you know, you're in a full body haptic seat, suit with a sort of surround vision and you know, you, it, 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 it becomes beyond a certain resolution indistinguishable from reality. Um, if, and, if, and there will likely to be, there will likely to be millions, maybe, maybe billions of such simulations. So then what are the odds that we're actually in base reality? Isn't it one in billions? I've been public on the fact that I'm waiting for someone to convince me that we don't live in a simulation. This is, I've heard you say it. The arguments put forth have been quite convincing okay. to me. And most of the best arguments are traceable to a guy named Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at the University of Oxford. Okay. Here's the argument, ready? Go ahead. Our computing power is growing rapidly. Right. We create simulations of worlds. We have video games with characters that are inside the video game. Right. Imagine a day where you can simulate a world so perfectly with life forms, humans, so well mm -hmm. that you can recreate every single neurosynaptic thought you could have, but now you're in the simulation on the computer. So. Including the perception of free will. Well, there you have it, because then, so now you would have enough computing power to imbue the sims inside of the program with all of the human traits that we possess now. Correct. Not only our human traits, but the world. But the world. The world itself. Right. So now that world evolves and they develop computing power. Right. And they say, we want to play video games. So now we're going to make a world. So then they make a world and they have sufficient computing power that they invent right. to create a whole universe within their computers. Okay. And then they, they make a world. And then they make a world all the way on down. Right. It could be hundreds, thousands, billions infinite so now close your eyes throw a dart mm. which of these universes are you going to land in the first one that's real or the gazillion that are not so what is life for you is it a dream is it <laughs> is life a real dream? is it a million d what is life for elon musk i find as as i get older i find that question to be maybe more and more confusing or troubling or uncertain. Um, I think particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games, you know, like say 40 years ago, you had video games, the most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot. 
you know, like batting it back and forth. I played it. Oh yeah, like me too, exactly. That's I played all. <laughs> exactly, it sort of dates you a little bit. But yeah, we, we both played the same game. Um, and that was like, wow, that was a pretty fun game at the time. Um, but now you can see a video game that's uh, photorealistic, almost photorealistic, and millions of people playing simultaneously. And, um, and you see where things are going with virtual reality um, and augmented reality. And if you extrapolate that out into the future with any rate of progress at all, like even 0.1% uh, or something like that uh, a year, then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. Um, and then it seems like, well, how do we know that that didn't happen in the past and that we're not in one of those games ourselves?